Who's there? They answer me. Stand and unfold yourself. Along with the king. Bernardo. He. But it comes carefully upon your hour. Francisco. And if you do meet Horatio and Marcellus, the rivals of my watch, bid them make haste. I think I hear them. Stand ho, who's there? Well, uh, friends to this ground. To the day. I give you good night. Hello? Bernardo! What? Say, is Horatio with you? <laughs> A piece of him. Welcome, Horatio. Welcome, good Marcellus. What, has the thing appeared again tonight? I've seen nothing. Horatio says tis but our fantasy. We'll not let believe take hold of him, touching his friend's sight, twice seen of us. <laughs> Therefore, I've entreated him along. Tush! T'will not appear. <laughs> we'll sit down a while. Let us again assail your ears that are so fortified against our story that we have two nights seen. <clears throat> well, sit we down and let us hear Bernardo speak of it. <clears throat> Last night, of all, when yon same star that's westward from the pole had made its course to illumine that part of heaven where now it burns, Marcellus and myself, the Belvin beating one. He spricked the earth! Ah, 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 again! In the same figure like the king that is dead. Thou art a scholar. Speak to Horatio. Looks it not like the king market, Horatio. Most like it harrows me with fear and wonder. Yeah. Uh, what? What art thou that usurpest this time of night, together with that fair and warlike form in which the very king of Denmark did sometimes march by heaven? I charge thee, speak! It is offended. See, it stalks away. No, stay. Stay, speak, speak, I speak. Speak. What? Tis gone and will not answer. Where? By my God, I would not disbelieve without the safe true avowal of my own eyes. It's. Is it not like the king? It's most like. This is strange. Good now, sit down and tell me he that knows why the same strict and most observant watch so nightly toils the subject of the land. Who is that can inform me? That can I. At least as the whisper goes so. Our late king whose image but even now appeared to us, was, as you know, by Fortin Bros of Norway, dared to the combat, which our valiant Hamlet did slay this Fortin Bros, who by a sealed compact did forfeit all of his lands, his life which he stood seized up to the conqueror. Now, sir, young Fortin Bros hath in the skirts of Norway here and there shocked up a list of lawless resolutes, but to recover by us in terms of strong hand, in terms compulsory, those aforesaid lands by the father lost, we... Oh! It comes again! Oh! Stay, spirit. I'll cross it, though it blast me. If thou hast any sound or use of voice, speak to me! Tis here! No, oh, tis here! Break we up our watch. And let us impart what we have seen tonight unto young Hamlet. For upon my life, this spirit, though dumped to us, will speak to him. Let's do it, I pray. And I this morning know where we shall find him most conveniently.
Though yet of Hamlet our dear brother's death, the memory be green in that it us befitted to bear our hearts in grief and our whole kingdom to be contracted in one brow of woe. Yet so far hath discretion fought with nature that we with wisest sorrow think on him together with remembrance of ourselves. Therefore, our sometime sister, now our queen, the imperial jointress to this warlike state, have we, as it were with a defeated joy, with mirth in funeral and with dirge in marriage, taken to wife. For all our thanks. <laughs> now follows that you know young Fortinbras. He hath not failed to pester us with message, importing the surrender of those lands lost by his father. <laughs> uh, uncle, we have here writ to uncle of young Fortinbras, who impotent in bedrid scarcely hears of his nephew's purpose. We here dispatch you, good Voltamand, for bearing of this greeting to old Norway. Farewell, and let your haste commend your duty. And that in all things I will show my duty. We doubt it nothing. Heartily, farewell. And now, Laertes, what's the news with you? You told us of some suit. What is it, Laertes? The head is not more native to the heart, the <laughs> hand more instrumental to the mouth than is the throne of Denmark to thy father. Uh, my dread lord, uh, your leave in favor to return to France from whence the willingly I came to Denmark to show my duty in your coronation. Mm. Yet now I must confess that duty done, my thoughts and wishes bend again toward France and bow them to your gracious leave and pardon. You have your father's leave. Aye. What says Polonius? He hath, my lord. Wrung from me my slow leave. <laughs> I do beseech you, give him leave to go. Take thy fair hour, Laertes. Time be thine. By thy best graces, spend it at thy will. And now, my cousin Hamlet and my son. A little more than kin and less than kind. How is it that the clouds still hang on you? Not so, my lord. I am too much in the sun. Good Hamlet, cast thy night and color off, and let thine eye look like a friend on Denmark. Do not forever with thy veiled lid seek for thy noble father in the dust. Thou knowest his coming. All that lives must die, passing through nature to eternity. Aye, madam, it is common. Well, if it be, why seems it so particular with thee? Seems, madam. Nay, it is. I know not seems. Tis not alone my inky cloak, good mother, nor customary suits of solemn black, but I have that within which passeth show. These but the trappings and the suits of woe. Tis sweet and commendable in your nature, Hamlet, to give these mourning duties to your father, but you must know, your father lost a father, that father lost, lost his, and the survivor bound in filial obligation for some term to do obsequious sorrow, but to persevere in... Obstinate condolement is a course of impious stubbornness. Tis unmanly grief. Why should we, in our peevish opposition, take it to heart? Fie! Tis a fault to heaven, a fault against the dead, a fault to nature. We pray you, throw to earth this unprevailing woe, and think of us as of a father. For your intent in going back to school in Wittenberg, it is most retrograde to our desire. Let not thy mother lose her prayers, Hamlet. I pray thee, stay with us. Go not to Wittenberg. I shall in all my best obey you, madam. <sighs> Tis a fair and loving reply. Be as ourself in Denmark. Hmm? Come away. Oh, that this too, too solid flesh would melt, thaw, and resolve itself into a dew. Oh, that the everlasting had not fixed his cannon against self-slaughter. Oh, God, God! How weary, stale, flat, and unprofitable seem to me all the uses of this world. A fire lit, a fight is an unweeded garden that grows to seed. Things rank and gross in nature possess it merely. 
that it should come to this. But two months dead. Nay, not so much. Not two. So excellent a king that was to this Hyperion, to a satyr, so loving to my mother that he might not beteem the winds of heaven visit her face too roughly. Heaven and earth must I remember. Why, she would hang on him as if the increase in appetite had grown by what it fed on, and yet within a month, let me not think on it, Frouty, thy name is woman. A little month, or oh, ere those shoes were old with which she followed my poor father's body like Niobe, all tears, and she, even she, oh God, a beast that wants discourse of reason would have mourned longer. Mary, with my uncle, my father's brother, but no more like my father than I to Hercules. Within the month, ere the salt of most unrighteous tears left the flushing of a golden eye, she married. Oh, most wicked speed to post with such dexterity to incestuous sheets. It is not, nor it cannot come to good, but Break my heart, for I must hold my tongue. Hail to your lordship. Oh, I'm glad to see thee well. Horatio, <laughs> why do you forget <laughs> myself? My lord, your poor servant, ever. My excellent good friend, I'll change that name with you. Marcellus, I'm glad to see thee well. Good even, sir. But what is your affair in Elsinore? We'll teach you to drink deep ere you depart. My lord, I came to see your father's funeral. I pray thee, do not mock me, fellow student. I think it was to see my mother's wedding. Indeed, it followed hard upon. Thrift, thrift, Horatio. The funeral baked meats did coldly furnish forth the marriage tables. Would I have met my dearest foe in heaven, or ere I'd seen that day, Horatio? My father. Methinks I see my father. Where, my lord? In my mind's eye, Horatio. I saw him once. He was a goodly king. He was a man. Take him for all in all. I shall not look upon his like again. My lord, I think I saw him yesternight. Saw who? The king, your father. The king, my father. Yes. Seizing your admiration for a little while, uh, with an intent ear, till I may deliver upon the witness of these gentlemen this marvel to you. For God's love, let me hear. Two nights together had these gentlemen in the dead, vast, and middle of the night been thus encountered. A figure... Like your father appears before them and with solemn march goes slow and stately by them. Thrice he walked within his trenchant's length while they, distilled almost to jelly, stand dumb and speak not to it. This to me in dreadful secrecy in part today, and I with them the third night kept watch where, as they had delivered both in time, form of the thing, each word made true and good, uh, the apparition comes. I knew your father. These hands were not more like. But where was this? My lord upon the platform where we watched. Well, did you not speak to it? My lord, I did, but answer made it none. It is very strange. As I do live, my honored lord, it is true. And we did think it right down in our duty to make you known of it. Indeed, indeed, sirs, but this troubles me. Hold you the watch tonight. We do, my lord. Armed, you say? Armed, my lord. Or would I have been there? Oh, it would have much amazed you. Very like, very like. I will watch tonight. Perchance to walk again. Well, I warrant it will. If it assume my noble father's person, I'll speak to it, though hell itself should gape and bid me hold my peace. Upon the platform twixt eleven and twelve, I'll visit you. Oh, duty, 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 your, honor. Honor. your love's is mine to you. Farewell. My father's spirit in arms. All is not well. I doubt some foul play. When the night will come, till then, Sit still, my soul. Foul deeds will rise, though all the earth overwhelm them to men's eyes.
My necessaries are embarked. Farewell. And sister, as the winds give benefit and convoys assistant, do not sleep, but let me hear from you. Do you doubt that? <laughs> ah, for Hamlet, and the trifling of his favor, hold it a fashion and a toy in blood, a violet in the youth of primy nature, forward, not permanent, sweet, not lasting, the perfume and suppliance of a minute. No more. <laughs> Tis, no more, but so? Think it no more. Perhaps he loves you now, but you must fear. His greatness weighed, his will is not his own, for he himself is subject to his birth. Then, weigh what loss your honor may sustain, if with too prudent ear you list his songs, or lose your heart, or your chaste treasure over ah! to his unmastered importunity. Fear it, Ophelia, fear it, my dear sister. I shall the effect of this good lesson keep as watchman to my heart. But, good my brother, do not, as some ungracious pastor do, show me the steep and thorny way to heaven, whilst, like a puffed and reckless libertine, himself the primrose path of dalliance treads, and wrecks not his own reed. Well, fear me not, I stay too long. Oh, but here my father comes. Uh, yet here, they are to, he's aboard, aboard for shame. The wind sits on the shoulder of your sail, and you are stayed for. Hmm. There, my blessing with thee, and uh, these few precepts in thy memory, see thou character, above all, to thine own self, be true, and it must follow as night the day that thou canst not be false to any man. Farewell, my blessing season this in thee. Most humbly do I take my leave, my lord. <laughs> Time awaits. Go. Your servants tend. <laughs> Farewell, Ophelia, and remember well what I have said to you. Tis hmm? in my memory locked, and you yourself shall keep the key Farewell! What is Ophelia he hath said to you? So please you something touching the Lord Hamlet? Mary, well be thought. Tis told me he hath very oft of late given private time to you, and you yourself have of your audiences been most free and bounteous. What is between you? Give me up the truth. He hath, my lord, of late me many tenders of his affection to me. <laughs> Affections? Pooh! You speak like a green girl. Do you believe his tenders, as you call them? I do not know, my lord, what I should think. <sighs> well, this is for all. I would not, in plain terms, from this time forth, have you so slander any moment's leisure as to give word or talk with Lord Hamlet. Look to it, I charge you, come your ways. I shall obey, my lord. What hour now? Uh, I think it lacks of twelve. No, it is struck. Indeed, I heard it not. Well then, it lies within the season where the spirit held its wont to walk. What is, my lord? The king doth wake tonight and takes his rouse, keeps wassail and the swaggering upspring reels, and as he drains his draughts of runnish down, the kettle drum and trumpet thus spray out the triumph of his pledge. Is it a custom? Aye, Mary, it is. But to my mind, though I am native here and to the manner born, it is a custom more honored in the breach of the oh, My lord, it comes! Angels and ministers of grace defend us! Oh. Be thou a spirit of health, O oh, goblin damned! Bring with the airs of heaven, or oh, blast from hell! Thou comest in such a questionable shape that I will speak to thee. I'll call thee Hamlet, King, Father, Royal Day. No answer me! What? It beckons you to go away with it, as if it's some impotment to desire to you alone. Look with what courteous action it waves you to a more removed ground. Could you not go with it? Why? What should be the fear? I do not set my life in a pit speed for my soul. What can I do to that, being a thing immortal as itself? 
Raise me still. Go on. I'll follow no, you. No, my lord. No. No. What if it should tempt you to this, the flood, my lord, or to the dreadful summit of the cliff, and there assume another horrible form which might deprive you of your sovereignty of reason, draw you into madness? Think of it. Raise me forth again. Go on. No, I'll follow me. Go, my lord. Put off your hands. By heaven, I'll make a ghost of him that lets me. I say, away. Go on. I'll follow thee. He waxes as desperate with imagination. Something is rotten in the state of Denmark. Don't lead me. Speak. I'll go no further. No. Mm -hmm. 
Lord, let thy soul contrive against thy mother. Host of heaven, O oh, earth, what else? And shall I couple hell? Remember thee, I, thou poor ghost, while memory holds a seat in this distracted globe. Remember thee, yea, from the table of my memory, I'll wipe away all trivial fond records, and thy commandment all alone shall live within the book and volume of my brain, and mix with baser matter, yes, by heaven! Oh, most pernicious woman! Oh, villain! Villain! Smiling, damned villain! My tables! Meet it is, I set it down! that one may smile and smile and be a villain. So, uncle, there you are. Not my word. It is a do or do you remember me. Lord. I've sworn it. My lord! My lord! Lord oh. Hamlet! Oh, my lord! Yes, my lord. Oh, wonderful. What could my lord tell us? There's never a villain dwelling in all Denmark, but he's an errant knave. No ghosts come from the grave to tell us this, my lord. Why, right? You are in the right. What? And so I hold it fit that without more circumstance at all, we shake hands and part. What? These are but wild and worldly words, my lord. I'm sorry they offend you heartily. No offense, my lord. Yes, by St. Patrick, but there is Horatio, and much offense, too. Touching this vision here, it is an honest ghost that let me tell you. For your desire to know what is between us, or master it as you may. And now, good friends, as you are friends, Scholars and soldiers, grant me one poor request. <laughs> what is, my lord, we will? Never make known what you have seen tonight. What? My lord, we will not. Nay, but swear <laughs> it. No, my lord, in faith, not I. No, I, my lord, in faith. Upon my sword. We have sworn, my lord, already. <laughs> Never to speak of this that you have seen. Swear by my sword. Strange day and night, this marvelous strange. Ah, uh, and therefore, as a stranger, give it welcome. There are more things in heaven and earth, Horatio, than are dreamt of in your philosophy. But come, here as before, never so help you mercy. How strange or odd, so where I bear myself, as I perchance hereafter shall think me to put an antic disposition on, that you at such time seeing me never shall note that you know aught of me. <laughs> this do swear. <laughs> I swear. Rest, rest, perturbed spirit. So, my friends, I do commend my love to you. And still your fingers on your lips, I pray. The time is out of joint. Oh, cursed spite, that ever I was born to set it right. Nay, come, let's go together. How now, Ophelia, what's the matter? Oh, my lord, my lord, I have been so affrighted. <laughs> With what, in the name of God? My lord, as I was sewing in my closet, Lord Hamlet, he comes before me. Mad for thy love. My lord, I do not know, but truly I do fear it. What did he say? He took me by the wrist and held me hard. Then goes he to the length of all his arm, and with his other hand thus o'er his brow, he falls to such perusal of my face as he would draw it. Long stayed he so, at last a little shaking of mine arm, and thrice his head thus waving up and down. He raised a sigh so piteous and profound as it did seem to shatter all his bulk and end his being. That done he lets me go, and with his head over his shoulder turned, he seemed to find his way without his eyes. 
for out of doors he went without their helps, and to the last bended their light on me. What, have you given him any hard words of late? No, my good lord, but as you did command, I did deny his access to me and repel his letters. Oh, that hath made him mad. Come, let us go to the king. I entreat you both, that being of so young days brought up with him, and Sith so neighbor to his youth and havior, that you vouchsafe your rest here in our court some little time, so by your companies, to draw him on to pleasures, and to gather so much as from occasion you may glean, that which opened lies within our remedy. He hath much talked of you, and sure I am two souls there are not living to whom he more adheres. <laughs> Both your majesty's might, by the sovereign power you have of us, put your dread pleasures more into command than to entreaty. <laughs> but we both obey and here give up ourselves in the full bent to lay our service freely at your feet, uh, to be commanded. Thanks, Rosencrantz, and gentle Guildenstern. Thanks, Guildenstern, and gentle Rosencrantz. I beseech you instantly to visit my too much changed son. For heavens make our presence and our practices pleasant and helpful to him. Hi, amen. <laughs> the ambassador from Norway, my lord, is joyfully returned. Ah, most welcome, my good friend. Say, Bolterman, what from our brother Norway? Hmm? Most fair returns of greetings and desires, Gordon Frost in brief, makes vow never more to give a say of arms against your majesty in an entreaty here and further shown. That it may please you to give further pass on through your dominions for this enterprise on such regards of safety and allowance therein is set down. It likes us well. Go to your rest. At night we'll feast together. Most welcome home. <laughs> <laughs> this business is well ended. Uh. My liege and madam, to expostulate, uh, what majesty should be, what duty is. Why, day is day, night, night, and time is time. I will be brief. Mm. Your noble son is mad. Uh, mad call I it for to divine true madness, what is to be nothing else but mad. <laughs> but let that go. More matter with less art. I use no art, madam, I swear. Uh, I have a daughter. Have well she is mine, who in her duty and obedience, Mark, hath given me this. Now gather and smise. <clears throat> to the celestial and my soul's idol, the most beautified of that's an ill phrase, a vile phrase. Beautified is a vile phrase. Came this from Hamlet to her. Good madam, stay a while. I'll be faithful. <clears throat> Doubt that the stars are fire. Doubt that the sun doth move. Doubt truth to be a liar, but never doubt I love. Oh, dear Ophelia, I am ill at these numbers. I have not art to reckon my groans, but that I love thee best. Oh, most best, believe it. Adieu. Thine evermore, most dear lady, whilst this machine is to him, Hamlet. This in obedience hath my daughter shown me, and my young mistress, thus did I bespeak that she lock herself from his resort, admit no messengers, and receive no tokens. Do you think tis this? It may be very likely. How may we try it further? You know, sometimes he walks four hours together here in the lobby. So he does indeed. At such a time, I'll loose my daughter to him. But you and I, behind an heiress then, mark the encounter. If he love her not, and be not from his reason fallen thereon, let me be no assistant for a state, but keep a farm in Carters. We shall try it. Hmm? All right. Oh, but look, sadly, where the poor wretch comes reading. Uh, away, both of you, I, I beseech you both right. away. I'll board him presently. How does my good Lord Hamlet? <laughs> well, God of mercy! Do you know me, my lord? Excellent well. You are a fishmonger. <laughs> Not I, my lord. Then I word you were so honest a man. Honest, my lord. Aye, to be honest as this world goes is to be one man picked out of 10,000. <laughs> That's very true, my lord. Have you a daughter? I have, my lord. Let her not walk in the sun! Conception is a blessing, but not as your daughter would conceive. Friend, look to it. How say you by that, still harping on my daughter? 
What are you reading, sir? Words. Words. Uh, <laughs> what is the matter, Words. my lord? Between who? I mean the matter that you're reading. Slander, sir. For the satirical rogue says here that old men have grey beards, that their faces are wrinkled, and that they have a plentiful lack of wit, together with most weak hands. For you yourself, sir, should be old as I am, if like a crab you could go backward. Though this be madness, there is method in it. Will you walk out of the air, my lord? Into my grave. <laughs> that is out of the air, my lord. How pregnant sometimes his replies are. I shall leave and suddenly contrive the means of meeting between him and my daughter. My most honorable lord, I humbly take my leave of you. You cannot, sir, take from me anything that will not war willingly part with all. Accept my life, accept my life, accept my life, accept my life. Fare you well, my lord. These tedious old fools. Ah, you, go and seek the Lord Hamlet. There he is. God save you, sir. <laughs> my honored lord. My most dear lord. Ah, <laughs> my excellent good friends. How do ye, Guildenstern? Ah, Rosencrantz, how do ye both? As the indifferent children of the world. Happy in that we are not over happy. On fortune's cap, we are not the very button. What's the news? None, my lord, but that the world's grown honest. Then is doomsday near. But your news is not true. Let me question in more particular. What have you, my good friends, deserved at the hands of fortune that she sends you to prison hither? Oh, a prison, my lord? Denmark's a prison. Oh, then is the world one. A goodly one, in which there are many confines, wards, and dungeons, Denmark being one of the worst. What make you at Elsinore? To see you, my lord, no other occasion. Beggar that I am, I'm even more poor in thanks. <laughs> but I thank ye. Were you not sent for? Is it your own inclining? Come, come, nay, speak. What should we say, my lord? Why, anything, but to the purpose. You were sent for, and there is a sort of confession in your looks which your modesties have not craft enough to color. I know the good king and queen have sent for you. Uh, to what end, my lord? That you must teach me. My lord, we were sent for. I'll tell you why. I have of late but wherefore I know not, lost all my mirth. This goodly frame, the earth, seems to me a sterile promontory. This excellent canopy, look you, the air, this brave or hanging firmament, this majestical roof fretted with a golden fire, why it appears no other thing to me than a foul and pestilent congregation of vapors. What a piece of work is a man! How noble in reason! How infinite in faculty! In form and sin! How express and admirable in action! How like an angel! In apprehension! How like a god! The beauty of the world! The paragon of animals! And yet to me, what is this quintessence of dust? Man delights not me. No! No woman neither! Think, my lord, if you delight not in men, what Lenten entertainment the players shall receive from you. We code them on the way, and hither are they coming to offer you service. What players be they? Even those you were wont to take delight in, the tragedians of the city. Friends, you are welcome at Elsinore. Come, your hands. The appetence of welcome is fashion and ceremony. My good lord. I have news to tell you. My lord, I have news to tell you when Roscius was an actor in Rome. The actors are come hither, my lord. Good mouth. The best actors in the world, either for tragedy, comedy, history, pastoral, for the laws of writ and the liberty, these are the only men. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> Welcome, good friends. Welcome, masters all. I'm glad to see thee well. Welcome, oh, my old friend. Come, we'll have a speech straight. Give us a taste of your quality. Come, a passionate speech. Uh, what speech, my lord? I heard they speak me a speech once. Twas Aeneas, Caleb, Dido. If it live in your memory, begin at this line. Let me see, let me see. The rugged Pyrrhus, 
whose sable arms, black as his purpose, did the knight resemble when he lay crouched in his ominous horse. So proceed you. <laughs> Forth, God, my lord, well spoken with good action and good discretion. Shh. Anon, he finds him, striking two shorted Greeks. His antique sword, rebellious to his arm, lies where it falls. <laughs> Repugnant to command, unequal matched, Pyrrhus at Priam drives in rage, strikes wide, but with the whiff and wind of his fell sword, the unnerved father falls. <laughs> so, like a painted tyrant, Pyrrhus stood, and like a neutral to his will and matter, did nothing. Oh. <laughs> so, after Pyrrhus pause, aroused vengeance set him new a work. Out! Out, thou strumpet fortune, and all you gods in general synod, take away her power, break <laughs> the spokes and fellies from her wheel, and pull the round knave down the hill of heaven, as low as to the theme. This is too long. <laughs> <laughs> and shout to the barbers with your beard, prithee say on, come to Hecuba. <laughs> But who, oh who, has seen the Marveled Queen? The Marveled Queen? Oh, that's good. The Marveled Queen is good. <laughs> Run barefoot up and down, and for a robe about her link and all or teamed loins, a blanket, and the alarm of fear caught up. And if the gods did see her then, when she saw Pyrrhus make malicious sport in mincing with his sword her husband's limbs, the instant burst of clamor that she made would have made milch the burning eyes of heaven and passion of the gods. <laughs> Whether his color is no change, she has tears in his eyes. I pray you no more. <laughs> Tis well. I'll have thee speak out the rest soon. Good, my lord, will you see the players well bestowed? Dost thou hear me? Let them be well used. After your death, you will better have a bad epitaph than their ill report while you live. Come, sirs. We'll have a play tomorrow night. Follow him, friends. Dost thou hear me, old friend? Can you play the murder of Gonzago? Aye, my lord. Tis well, we'll have tomorrow night. You could, for a need, study a speech of some dozen or sixteen lines which I could insert and write, could you not? <laughs> Aye, my lord. Well, follow that lord, and look you mock him not. <sighs> my friends, I'll leave you till tonight. You are welcome at Elsinore. Oh, good, my lord. <laughs> I so, God be with ye. <laughs> Now I am alone. Oh, what a rogue and peasant slave am I! Is it not monstrous that this player here, but in a fiction, in a dream of passion, could force his soul to his own conceit, and from her working, all his visage wand, tears in his eyes, distraction in his aspect, a broken voice, and his whole function shooting with forms to his conceit, and all for nothing. For Hecuba! What's Hecuba to him, or he to Hecuba, that he should weep for her? What would he do, had he the motive and cue for passion that I have? He would drown the stage in tears and cleave the general ear in horrid speech, make mad the guilty, appall the free, confound the ignorant, and amaze indeed the very faculties of eyes and ears. Yet I, a dull and mutty-meddled rascal, 
peak like a jaw in the dreams, unpregnant for my cause, can say nothing. No, not for a king upon whose property and most dear life a damned defeat was made. Am I a coward? Who calls me villain? Breaks my pate across, plucks off my beard and blows it in my face, tweaks me by the nose, gives me the lie in the throat as deep into the lungs. Who does me this? I swoons, I should take it. But it cannot be because I am pigeon livered and lack gall to make oppression bitter. Or ere this, I should have fatted all the region kites with the slaves. Awful, bloody, body villain, remorseless, treacherous, lecherous, kindless villain. Oh, vengeance! Why, what an ass am I? This is most brave. That I, the son of the dear murdered, prompted to my revenge by heaven and hell, must like a whore unpack my heart with words and fall a cursing like a very drab, a scullion, fire but it fall about my brain. I have heard that guilty creatures sitting at a play have by the very cunning of the scene been struck so to the soul that presently they have proclaimed their malfactions. For murder, though it have no tongue, will speak with most miraculous organ. I'll have these players play something like the murder of my father before mine uncle. I'll observe his looks. I'll tend him to the quick. If he but blench, I know my course. The spirit that I've seen may be the devil, and the devil hath power to assume a pleasing shape. And yea, out of my melancholy and my weakness, as he is very potent with such spirits, abuses me to damn me. I'll have more grounds relative than this. The play's the thing. Wherein I'll catch the conscience of the king! Did you assay him to any pastime? Madam, it so fell out that certain players we all wrought on the way of these we told him, and there did seem in him a kind of joy to hear it. They are about the court, and, as I think, have already had order this night to play before him. Tis most true, and he beseeched me to entreat your majesties to hear and see the matter. With all my heart, and it doth much content me to hear him so inclined. Good friends, give him a further edge, and drive his purpose on to these delights. We shall, my lord. <laughs> <laughs> Good Gertrude, leave us too, for we have closely sent for Hamlet hither, that he, as twere by accident, may hear affront Ophelia. I shall obey you. Mm. And for your part, Ophelia, oh, I do wish that your good beauties be the happy cause of Hamlet's wildness. So shall I hope that your virtue will bring him to his wanton way again, to both your honors. Madam, I wish it may. Ophelia, walk you here. Gracious, so please you, we will bestow ourselves. I hear him coming. Withdraw, my lord. To be or not to be, that is the question. 
Whether tis nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, or to take arms against a sea of troubles and by opposing end them to die, to sleep no more. And by a sleep, we say to end the heartache and the thousand natural shocks that flesh is heir to. Tis a consummation devoutly to be wished to die, to sleep, to sleep, perchance to dream. Aye, there's the rub. For in the sleep of death, what dreams may come when we have shuffled off this mortal coil? Let's give us pause. There's the respect that makes calamity of so long life. For who would bear the whips and scorns of time? The oppressor's wrong, the proud men's contumely, the pangs of despised love, the insolence of office, the law's delay and the spurns of that patent merit of the unworthy text when he himself might disquiet his make with a bare bodkin. Who would fardels bear to grunt and sweat under a weary life? But that the dread of something after death, the undiscovered country from whose born no traveler returns, puzzles the will and makes us rather bear those ills we have than fly to others that we know not of. Thus conscience does make cowards of us all. And thus the native hue of resolution is sicklied all with the pale cast of thought. And enterprises of great pitch and moment with disregard their currents turn awry. And lose the name of action. Talk to you now. The fair Ophelia. Nymph, in thy orisons be all my sins remembered. But my lord, how does your honor this many a day? I humbly thank you well, well, well. My lord, I have remembrances of yours that I have longed, longed to re-deliver to you. Take these again. For to the noble mind, rich gifts wax poor when givers prove unkind. There, my lord. Ha ha! Are you honest? My lord? Are you fair? What means your lordship? That if you be honest and fair, your honesty should admit no discourse to your beauty. Could honesty, my, could beauty, my lord, hold better commerce than with honesty? Aye, truly. For the power of beauty will sooner transform honesty from what it is to a bard than the force of honesty can translate beauty into his likeness. I did love you once. Indeed, my lord, you made me believe so. You should not have believed me. I was the I more deceived. I you not. I was the more deceived. Get thee to another reef. Why wouldst thou be a breeder of sinners? I am myself indifferent, honest, but yet I could accuse me of such things. It were better my mother had not born me. I am very proud, revengeful, ambitious, and have more offenses at my back than I have thoughts to put them in, imagination to give them shape, or time to act them in. What should such fellows as I do? Crawling between earth and heaven, we are errant knaves all. Believe none of us. Go thy ways to a nunnery. Where's your father? At home, my lord. Let the doors be shut upon him, that he may play the fool nowhere but in his own house. Farewell! Oh, help him, 
dowry, sweet heavens. If thou dost marry, I'll give thee this plague for thy dowry. Be thou as chaste as ice, as pure as snow. Thou shalt not escape calumny. Get thee to a nunnery. Or if thou wilt needs marry, marry a fool. For wise men know well enough what monsters you make of them. To a nunnery go and quickly to farewell. Oh, heavenly powers restore him. I've heard of your paintings too well enough. God hath given you one face, and you make yourselves another. Go to, I'll no more on it, and it made me mad. I say, we shall have no more marriages. Those that are married already, all but one shall live. The rest shall keep as they are. To a nunnery. Go! Oh, what a noble mind is here overthrown. The courtiers, soldiers, scholars, eye, tongue, sword. The expectancy and rose of the fair state. The glass of fashion in the mold of form, the observed of all observers, quite, quite down. And I, of ladies most deject and wretched, that sucked the honey of his music vows, now see that noble and most sovereign reason, like sweet bells jangled out of tune and harsh, that unmatched form and feature of blown youth, blasted with ecstasy. Oh, woe is me to have seen what I have seen. See what I see. Love, his affections do not that way tend. And what he spake, though it lacked form a little, then it was not like madness. There's something in his soul, o'er which his melancholy sits on brood. And I do fear the hatch and the disclose will be some danger. Which for to prevent, I have in quick determination thus set it down. He will with speed to England for the demand of our neglected tribute. What think you on it? It shall do well. Hmm. But yet do I believe the origin and commencement of his grief sprung from neglected love. My lord, do as you please. But if you hold fit after the play, let his queen mother alone entreat him to share his grief. Let her be round with him. I'll be placed in ear of all their conference. If she find him not, to England send him. It shall be so. Madness in great ones should not unwatched go. speech, I pray you, as I pronounced it to you, trippingly on the tongue. But if you mouth it as many of your players do, I would as leave the town crier had spoke my lines. Nor do not saw the air so much with your hands, but use all gently. For in the very torrent, tempest, and as I may say, the whirlwind of passion, you must acquire and beget a temperance that gives it smoothness. Oh, it offends me to the soul to hear a robustuous, periwig pated fellow tear a passion to tatters, to very rags, and split the ears of the groundlings, who, for the most part, are capable of nothing but inexplicable dumb show and noise. Pray you, avoid it. I warrant your honor. Ah, be not too tame, neither, but let your own discretion be your tutor. Suit the action to the word, the word to the action. With this special observance that you all step not the modesty of nature. For anything so overdone is for the purpose of playing, whose end, both from the first to now, was and is as twere to hold the mirror up to nature. 
and let those that play your clowns speak no more than is set down for them, for there will be of themselves that will laugh to set on some barren spectators to laugh to. Go, make you ready. <laughs> Ah, uh, Horatio! Ha <laughs> <laughs> ah, ha! There is a play tonight before huh? the king. What? One scene of it comes near the circumstance which I have told thee of my father's death. Shh! I pray thee, when thou seest this act afoot, even with the very comment of thy soul, observe, mine uncle. Hmm? If his occult of guilt do not uncannel in one speech, it is a damned ghost that we have seen. <laughs> I myself will rivet to his face. And after we words, we will our judgments join in censure of his seeming. Well, my lord, if the king sleep aught while the play is plain, I will pay the thing. Ah, go with him. Come into the play. Get to a place. I must be idle. Cousin Hamlet. Excellent in faith of the chameleon's dish. I eat the air. <laughs> Promise crammed. You cannot feed tape on so. I have nothing with this answer, Hamlet. These words are not mine. No, nor mine now. Be the players ready. Aye, my lord. They stay upon your patience. Uh, you are merry, my lord? Aye, for what should a man do but be merry? For look you, how cheerfully my mother looks, and my father died within these two hours. Nay, it is twice two months, my lord. So long! Why, then, let the devil wear black. I'll have a suit of sables. Oh, heavens! Died two months ago and not forgotten yet. Then there's hope a great man's memory may outlive his life half a year. <laughs> For us and for our tragedy, here stooping to your clemency, we beg your hearing patiently. Oh, oh. <laughs> Tis brief, my lord. As woman's love. Full thirty times hath Phoebus' card gone round, Neptune's salt wash and Delis orb ground. Since love our hearts and Hymen did our hands unite commutually in these most sacred bands. So many journeys may the sun and moon make us again count or ere love be done. But woe is me, you are so sick of late, so far from cheer and from your former state that I distrust you. Yet though I distrust, Discomfort you, my lord, if nothing must. Sweet, I must leave thee, and shortly too. My operant powers their functions leave to do. But you will live in this fair world behind, honored, beloved, and haply one is kind, for a husband shalt thou. Oh, confound the rest. Such love must needs be treason in my breast. And second husband, let me be accursed. None wed the second, but you killed the first. Why, what, what, what? The instances that second marriage move are base respects of thrift, but none of love. A second time I kill my husband dead, when second husband kisses me in bed. I do believe you speak what now you think, but what we do determine oft we break. So think thou wilt no second husband wed, but die thy thoughts when thy first lord is dead. Nor earth to give me food, nor heaven light. Sport and repose lock from me day and night. Both here and hence pursue me lasting strife. If once a widow, ever I be wife. If she should break it now. Tis deeply sworn. 
Sweet, leave me here a while. My spirits grow dull and fain I would beguile the tedious day with sleep. Sleep, rock thy brain, and never come mischance between us twain. Madam, how like you display. The lady protests too much, methinks. Oh, but she'll keep her word. What do you call the play? The mousetrap. Merry how? Tropically. This play is the image of a murder done in Vienna. Tis a knavish piece of work, but what of that? Your majesty and we that have free souls, it touches us not. <laughs> this is one Lucianus, nephew to the king. You're as good as a chorus, my lord. I could interpret between you and your love, could I see the puppets dallying. Thoughts black, hands out, drugs fit, and time agreeing. Confederate season, all snow creatures sing. That makes charade with men that weeds clotted, who <laughs> hate man thrice blasted, thrice infected. Thy natural magic and thy property, unwholesome life usurp immediately. <laughs> He murders him in the garden for his estate. You shall see it now, now the murderer gets the love of Gonzago's wife. The king rises. What, frightened with false fire? Give me some light. Away! Lights! 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 Oh, so good, Horatio. I'll take the ghost's word for a thousand pounds. Did perceive. I did, my lord. Upon the talk of the poisoning. I did, my lord, very well. Uh, uh, good, my lord. Vouchsafe me a word with you. Aye, sir. A whole history. Uh, the king, sir. Aye, sir. What of him? Is in his retirement marvelous distempered. Your wisdom should show itself more richer to signify this to a doctor. <laughs> good, my lord. Uh, put your discourse into some frame and start not so wildly from my affair. I am tame, sir. Pronounce. The queen, your mother, in most great affliction of spirit, hath sent me to you. You are welcome. Uh, nay, good my lord, uh, this courtesy is not of the right breed. If it shall please you to make me a wholesome answer, I will do so and do your mother's commandment. If not, your pardon and my return shall be the end of my business. I cannot, sir. What, my lord? Give you a wholesome answer. My wits deceased. My mother, you say? <laughs> she desires to speak with you in her closet before you go to bed. We shall obey. Were she ten times our mother? <laughs> Leave me, friends. <laughs> now it is the very witching time of night when churchyards yawn and hell itself breathes out contagion to this world. Now can I drink hot blood and do such bitter business as the day would quake to look upon? Soft. Now to my mother. O oh, heart, lose not thy nature. Let not the soul of Nero enter this firm bosom. Let me be cruel, but not unnatural. I will speak daggers to her, but use none. My tongue and soul in this be hypocrites. How in my words soever she be sent, to give them seals never my soul consent. He is going to his mother's closet. Behind the avarice, I'll convey myself to hear the process. Fare thee well, my lord. I'll call upon you ere you go to bed and tell you what I know. Thanks, dear my lord. Oh, my offense is rank. It smells to heaven. It hath the primal eldest curse upon it. My brother's murder. Pray can I not, oh. Inclination be as sharp as will. My stronger guilt defeats my strong intent. And like a man to double business bound, I stand in pause where I shall first begin and both neglect. What if this cursed hand were thicker than itself with brother's blood? Would there not be rain enough in the sweet heavens to wash it white as snow? Oh, where to serves mercy but to confront the visage of offense and 
what's in prayer, but that twofold force to be forestalled ere we come to fall. Or pardoned being down, then I'll look up. Oh. oh, what form of prayer can serve my turn? Forgive me my foul murder? That cannot be, for I am still possessed of those effects for which I did the murder. Bow stubborn knees and hearts with strings of steel. Be soft as sinews of the newborn babe. All may be well. Now might I do it, Pat. Now he is praying. And so I'll do it. And so he goes to heaven. And so I am revenged. That would be scanned. A villain kills my father. And so I, his sole son, do send the same villain to heaven. Oh, this is higher in salary, not revenge. He took my father grossly full of bread. All his crimes broad blown as flash as may. And am I then revenged to take him in the purging of his soul when he is fit and seasoned for his passage? No! Up sword, and know thou a more horrid hent when he is drunk asleep or in his rage or in the incestuous pleasure of his bed, then trip him that his heels may kick in heaven and his soul be as damned and black as hell where to it goes. My mother stays. This physic but prolongs thy sickly days. My words fly up. My thoughts remain below. Words without thoughts ne'er to heaven go. He will come straight. Look, you lay hold of him. Tell him his pranks have been too broad to bear with. Pray you, be round with him. I'll warrant you. Mother? Fear me not. Mother? Withdraw, I hear him coming. Mother? Mother! 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 Oh! <laughs> How now, mother? What's the matter? Hamlet, thou hast thy father much offended. Mother, you have my father much offended. Why? Come, come, you answer with an idle tongue. Go, go, you question with a wicked tongue. Why, how now, Hamlet? What's the matter now? Have you forgot me? No, by the rude, not so. You are the queen. Your husband, brother's wife, and would it were not so, you are my mother. Oh, nay then, I'll set those to you that can speak. Peace set you down, <coughs> you shall not go. You go not till I set you up a glass, and you may see the inmost part of you. What wilt thou do? Thou wilt not murder me? Help! Help! Oh! What help? Help! Oh no, help! Dead boy, dog it! Nay, I know not. Is it the king? Oh, oh. What a rash and bloody deed is this? A bloody deed? Oh. Almost as bad, good oh. mother, as kill a king and marry with his brother. As kill a king? Aye, lady. T'was my word. Peace! Sit you down. Let me wring your heart. For so I shall, if it be made of penetrable stuff. What have I done, that thou darest wag thy tongue in noise so rude against me? Look here, upon this picture. And on this, the counterfeit presentment of two brothers. See what a grace was seated on his brow. 
Hyperion's curls, the front of Jove himself, and I like Mars to threaten and command, a combination and a form indeed, where every god did seem to set his seal to give the world assurance of a man. This was your husband. Look you here, what follows. Here is your husband, like a mildewed ear, blasting his wholesome brother. Have you eyes? Could you on this fair mountain leave to feed and batten on this moor? Have you eyes? Oh, shame, where is I blush? Oh, Hamlet, speak no more. Thou hast turned my eyes into my very soul, and there I see such black and grained spots as will not leave their feet. Nay, but to live in the rank sweat of an seamen bed, honeying and making love, stewed in corruption. Oh, speak to me no more. Uh, These words like daggers enter in mine ears no more, sweet heaven. A murderer and a villain. A slave that is not twentieth part the tithe of your precedent lord. A vice of kings, a cut purse of the empire, and the rule that from a shelf the precious diadem stolen put it in his pocket. A king of shreds and patches. Save me. Hover over me with your wings, you heavenly gods. What would your gracious figure? Last year's love. Do not forget this. Visitation is meant to wet thy own most loved purpose. But look, amazement on thy mother's death between her and her fighting soul speak to her. Is it with you, lady? Alas, how is it with you that you do bend your eye on vacancy and with the incorporal air do hold discourse? Oh, gentle son, upon the heat and flame of thy distemper sprinkle cool patience. Whereon do you knock? On him, on him, look how pale he glares. To whom do you speak this? Do you see nothing there? Nothing at all, but all that is I see. Look where he steals. My in his habit, my father in his habit as he lived. Look where he goes even now out of the portal. Oh, this is the very coinage of your brain. This bodiless creation ecstasy is very cunning in... Ecstasy! My pulse as yours doth temperately keep time. <laughs> Confess yourself to heaven. Repent what's past, avoid what is to come, and do not spread the compost on the weeds to make them rancor. Oh, Hamlet, thou hast cleft my heart in twain. Oh, throw away the worser part of it, and live the purer with the other half. Good night. But go not to mine uncle's bed. Assume a virtue if you have it not. For this same Lord, I do repent. I will bestow him and will answer well the death I gave him. So again, good night. I must be cruel only to be kind. Thus bad begins and worse remains behind. Be thou assured, if words be made of breath and breath of life, I I have no life to breathe what thou hast said to me. I must to England. You know that. Alas, I have forgot to so conclude it on. This man shall set me packing. I'll lug the guts into the neighbor room. Come, sir, to draw toward an end with you. Good night, mother. Where is your son? Oh, my good Lord, what I have seen tonight. What, Gertrude? Oh. How does Hamlet? Mad as the sea and wind when both contend which is the mightier. 
in his lawless fit. Behind the air is hearing something stirring. He whips out his rapier and he cries, a rat, a rat. And in this brainish apprehension, he kills the unseen good old man. Oh, heavy deed. It had been so with us had we been there. His liberty, his liberty is full of threats to all, to you yourself, to us, to everyone. How shall this bloody deed be answered? Oh, Gertrude, come away. Come. Oh, good friends, join you in some further aid. Hamlet, in madness, hath Polonius slain, and from his mother's closet hath he dragged him. Go, seek him out, speak fair, and bring the body into the chapel. I pray you hasten this. Come, Gertrude. We'll call up our wisest friends and tell them both what we mean to do and what's untimely done. Oh, come away. My soul is full of discord and dismay. Safely stowed. Hamlet! Hamlet! Oh, oh, what noise is... Oh, here they come. Mm. What have you done, my lord, with the dead body? Compounded it with dust, where two tis kin. Tell us where it is that we may take it thence to the chapel. Do not believe it. Believe what? That I can keep your counsel and not mine own. Besides, to be demanded of a sponge. What replication should be made by the son of a king? I understand you know, my lord. I'm glad of it. A neighbor's speech sleeps in a foolish ear. My lord, tell us where the body is and come with us to see the king. The body is with the king, but the king is not with the body. The king's a thing. A thing, my lord. Of nothing. Bring me to him. I... Oh, Rosencrantz. Huh? How now? What hath befallen? Where he hath bestowed the body, my lord, we cannot get from him. Bring him before us. Oh, Guildenstern, bring it, my lord. Mm. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> now, Hamlet. Mm. Where is Polonius? At supper! At supper? Where? Not where he eats, but where he is eaten. A certain convocation of politic worms are eating at him. Ah. Where is Polonius? In heaven! Send hither to see. If your messenger find him not there, seek him in the other place yourself. But indeed, if you find him not within the month, you shall nose him as you go up the stairs into the lobby. Go and seek him there. He will stay till you come. Hamlet, this deed must send you hence with fiery haste. Therefore, prepare yourself. The bark is ready, the wind at help. The associates tend, and everything is bent for England! For England! <clears throat> Farewell, dear mother. Thy loving father, Hamlet. My mother. Father and mother is man and wife. Man and wife is one flesh. And so my mother. Come. For England. Follow him at foot. Tempt him with speed aboard. Delay it not. I will have him hence tonight. Away. For everything is sealed and done that else leans on the affair. Pray you hasten this! <sighs> In England, mayst thou not coldly set our sovereign process. My letters congruing to that effect, the present death of Hamlet. Till I know tis done, however my haps, my joys were ne'er begun. Go, Captain. Uh, from me, greeted the Danish king. Tell him that by his license, Fortin Braz craves the conveyance of a promised march over his kingdom. You know the rendezvous. If that his majesty would aught with us, we shall express our duty in his eyes, and let him know so. I will do it, my lord. Go softly on. Where is the beauty 
His Majesty of Denmark. Oh, now, Ophelia. How should I, your true love, know from another one? By his cockle hat and staff and his sandal shoe. Sweet lady, what imports this song? He is dead and gone, lady. He is dead and gone. At his head, a grass green turf at his heels, a star. Nay, Ophelia. Like his shroud as the mountain snow. Oh, oh, oh. Larded with sweet flowers, which be wept to the ground. Did not go with true love showers. By gifts and by saint charity, alack and fie for shame. Young men will do it, they come to it. By cock, they are to blame. How long has she been thus? I hope all will be well. We must be patient, but I cannot choose but weep to think that they would lay him in the cold ground. My brother shall hear of it, and so I thank you for your good counsel. Come, my coach. Good night, ladies. Good night, sweet ladies. Good night. Good night. This is the madness of deep grief. It springs all from her father's death. Oh, poor Ophelia. Oh, the vile king, give me my father! What is the reason, oh, Laertes, oh, oh, that thy rebellion oh, looks so giant-like? Oh, Let him go, Gertrude. Do not fear our person. Why thou art thus incensed? Where is my father? Dead. No! no. And not no. by him! Not no. by him! Let him demand his fill. How came he dead? I'll not be juggled with. That I am guiltless of your father's death, and am most sensible in grief for it. It shall be as level to your judgment, Pierce, as day does to your eye. Oh, he dry up my brain. Tears seven times salt burn out the sense and virtue of mine eye. Kind maid. Dear sister, sweet Ophelia. There's rosemary. That's for remembrance. Pray you love remember. And there's pansies. That's for thoughts. There's fennel for you. And columbines. And here's rue for you. And here's some for me. We may call it the herb of Christ, so Sundays. Oh, you must wear your rue with a difference. There's a daisy. I would give you some violets, but they withered all when my father died. They say he made a good end. For Bonnie, sweet Robin is all my joy. And will he not come again? And will he not come again? No! No! He is dead! Go to thy deathbed! He never will come again. His hair was white as snow, all flaxen was his pole. He is gone, he is gone, and we cast away moan. God! A mercy on his soul! And to all Christian souls, I pray God, God be with ye.
you see this, O oh God. Laertes, I must commune with your grief, or you deny me right, go but apart. Be you content to lend your patience to us, and we shall jointly labor with your soul to give it due content. And so have I, a noble father lost, a sister driven into desperate terms whose worth if praises may go back again, stood mount of challenger for all the ages for her perfections. But my revenge will come. Break not your sleeps for that. You must not think us made of stuff so flat and dull that we can let our beard be shook with danger oh. and think it past time. <clears throat> uh, how now? What news? Letters, my lord, from Hamlet. From I Hamlet? have this to your majesty and I have this to the queen. Who brought them? Sailors, my lord, they say I saw them not. Laertes, you shall hear them. Hi. Leave us. Yeah. High and mighty, tomorrow shall I beg leave to see your kingly eyes, when I shall, first asking your pardon thereunto, recount the occasion of my sudden and more strange return. Hamlet, what should this mean? Know you the hand. Well, it's his Hamlet's character. Aye. Can you advise me? I am lost in it, my lord. Ah, oh, but let him come. Huh? It warms the very sickness of my heart that I shall live and tell him to his teeth. Thus didst thou. If he be now returned, I shall work him to an exploit. Now ripen my device. Uh, some two months hence, here, there was a gentleman of Normandy. He made confession of you and gave you such a masterly report in art and exercise in rapier, most especially. What out of this, my lord? Laertes, what would you undertake to show yourself your father's son indeed more than in words? To cut his throat in the church! No place indeed should murder sanctuarize. Revenge should have no bounds. But, good Laertes, will you do this? Keep yourself close within your chamber. Hamlet, returned, will know you have come home. We'll put on those who will praise your excellence and wager on your heads. He, being remiss, most generous and free from all contriving, will not peruse the rapier so that you with ease or with little shuffling, may choose a sword unbated and in the pass of practice requite him for your father. I'll do it. Hmm? And for that purpose, I'll anoint my sword. Ah. I bought an unction of mountebank so mortal that but dip a knife in it. If I gall him slightly, it may be death. When in your motion you are hot and dry, I'll have prepared for him and he calls for a drink, a chalice for the nonce. Whereupon, but sipping... If he should escape your venom stung, there our purpose may hold. <clears throat> How now, sweet queen? One woe doth tread upon another's heel. So fast they follow. Your sister's drowned, Laertes. Drowned? Where? There is a willow that grows a slant of brook that shows his hoard leaves in the glassy stream. And there with fantastic garlands did she come. Went down her weedy trophies and herself fell in the weeping brook. Her clothes spread wide and mermaid like a while they bore her up. But long it could not be till that her garments heavy with their drink Hold the poor wretch from her melodious lays to muddy death. Alas, then she's drowned. <laughs> drowned. Drowned. <laughs> Too much water hast thou, poor Ophelia, and therefore I forbid my tears. But it is nature's trick her custom holds. Let shame say what it will. When I'm through, the women will be out. Adieu, my lord. I have a speech of fire that fain would blaze, but that this folly doubts it. How much I had to do to calm his rage. I fear this will give it rise again. Therefore, let us follow. Ah! 
Has this fellow no feeling at his business that he sings a grave making? Uh, custom <coughs> hath made mm. a property of easiness in him. Mm. Even so, the hand of little employment hath the daintiest scent. Mm -hmm. That skull had a tongue in it and could mm. sing once. How a knave jowls it to the ground as if it were Cain's jawbone that did the first murder. <coughs> I will speak to this fellow. <laughs> Whose grave is this, Sirrah? Mine, sir. I think it be thine, for thou liest in it. Yeah, you do not lie in it, and so it's not yours. For my part, I do not lie in it, and yet it is mine. Thou dost lie in it, to be in it and say it is thine. <laughs> Tis for the dead, not for the quick, therefore thou liest. Tis a quick lie, twill away again from me to you. <laughs> what man dost thou dig for? No, none, sir. What woman, then? Uh, for none, neither. Who is to be buried in it? One that was a woman, but rest her soul, she's dead. <laughs> How absolute the knave is. <laughs> yeah. huh. How long has thou been a grave maker? Uh, of all the days of the year, I came to it that day that our last king, Hamlet, overcame Fortinbras. How long is that since? You not tell? Any fool can tell that. Uh, the same day that young Hamlet was born, he that is mad and gone to England. Aye, Mary, why was he sent into England? Oh, aye, because he was mad. He'll regain his senses there. If not, it won't much matter there. Why? Won't be seen in him. There all the men are as mad as he. <laughs> <laughs> How came he mad? Very strangely, they say. How strangely? Yeah, with losing his wits. Upon what ground? Why, here in Denmark! Uh. <laughs> How long will a man lie in the earth ere he rot? Hmm. If he not be rotten before he die, uh, that'll scarce hold the laying in. He will last you some eight year, nine year. Ooh! Here's a skull that's laid in the earth three and twenty years. Whose was it? A pestilence upon him for a mad rogue. He poured a flag and a right here on my head once. <laughs> this was Yorick's skull, the king's jester. For this? In that? Well, let me see. <sighs> Alas, poor Yorick. Mm. I knew him, Horatio. Mm. A fellow of infinite jest, of most excellent fancy. He hath borne me on his back a thousand times, and now how abhorred in my imagination it is. My gorge rims at it. He hung those lips I have kissed I know not how oft. Where be your jibes now? Your gambles. Your songs, your flashes of merriment that will want to set the table on a roar. Not one now to mock your own grinning. Quite chap fallen. Now, get you to my lady's chamber and tell her, let her paint an in stick. To this favor she must come. Make her laugh at that. Pretty Horatio, tell me one thing. What is, my lord? Does thou think Alexander looked on this fashion? <laughs> Even so, my lord. And smelt so? Ah! Oh. Mm hmm. Even so. To what base uses we may return, Horatio? Alexander died. Alexander was buried. Alexander returneth into dust. Imperious Caesar, dead and turned to clay, might stop a hole to keep the window away. <laughs> soft, soft, aside. Here comes the king. And queen, and courtiers. 
Who is this they follow? And with such maimed rites. <gasps> this doth bespoke the course they follow, did with desperate hand for do its own life. Twas of some estate. Couch me a while and mark. Must there no more be done? No more be done. We should profane the service of the dead to sing a requiem and such rest to hers to peace parted souls. Lay her in the earth, and from her fair and unpolluted flesh may violets spring. Oh no, the fair Ophelia! Sweets to the sweet, farewell. I hoped thou shouldst have been my Hamlet's bride. I thought thy bride bed to have decked sweet maid, and not have strewed thy grave. Oh, treble woe, fall ten times treble on that cursed head whose wicked deed thy most ingenious sense deprived thee of. Hold off the earth a while till I have held her once more in mine arms. Now pile your dust upon the cricket dead till of this flat a mountain you have made. What is he whose grief bears such an emphasis? Whose phrase of sorrow conjures the wandering stars and makes them stand as wonder-wounded hearers? This is I, Hamlet the day! The devil take thy ah. soul! Stop! Ah. Stop! Ah. 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 with all their quantity of love, make up my sum. What wouldst thou do with her? Be buried quick with her, and so will I. What is the reason that you use me thus? I loved you ever. But tis no matter. Let Hercules himself do it as he may. The cat will mew, and dog will have this day. I pray you, good Horatio, wait upon him. No. Strengthen your patience no. in our last night's speech. We'll put the matter to the present push. No. Good Gertrude, go and set some watch over your son. This grave shall have a living monument. An hour of quiet shortly shall we see. Until then, in patience our proceeding be. Up from my cabin, groped I in the dark to find out them, fingered their packet to unseal their grand commission, where I read, Horatio, an exact command that my head should be struck off. What? Is it possible? Here's the commission. Yeah. Read it at more leisure. But will thou hear me how I did proceed? I good, my lord. Thus being benetted round with villainies, I sat me down, devised a new commission, wrote it fair, Wilt thou know the effect of what I write? I beseech you. <laughs> An earnest conjuration from the king. Huh? Upon the knowing and viewing of these contents, he should the bearers put to sudden death. Wh I have my father's signet in my purse, which is the very model of that Danish seal, <laughs> folded the writ up in form of the other, the changeling never known. So Rosencrantz and Guildenstern go to it. Why, man, they did make love to this employment. <laughs> They're not near my conscience. Tis dangerous when the baser nature comes between the pass and fell in sense points of mighty opposites. Why? What is a king to this? Does it not think thee stand me now upon? He that hath killed my king and whored my mother, thrown out his angle for my proper life and with such cozenage, is it not conscience to quit him with his arm? Is it not to be damned? To let this canker of our nature come in further evil. Aye, it will be shortly known to him what is the, bish, the, the issue of England in there. It will be it, short. It, but I am sorry, Horatio, that to I forgot myself. 
Sonra ben orada. Um, peace. Who comes here? Uh, your lordship is right. Uh, welcome back to Denmark. I humbly thank you, sir. Dost know this waterfly? No, my good lord. Thy state is the more gracious. Tis a vice to know him. Aye. Sweet lord, if your lordship were at leisure, I should impart a thing to you from his majesty. I will embrace it, sir, with all diligence of spirit. Uh, put your bonnet to its right use, tis for the head. Oh, I thank your lordship, it is very hot. No, believe me, tis very cold. The wind is northerly. Oh, it is indifferent cold, my lord, indeed. And yet methinks it is very hot and sultry for my complexion. Oh, it is exceedingly hot, my lord. Oh, but were I cannot tell how. <laughs> but, my lord... His Majesty bade me signify to you that he has laid a great wager on your head. Sir, you are not ignorant of what excellence Laertes is. Huh. The king has laid that he shall not exceed you three hits. It would come to immediate trial if your lordship would vouchsafe the answer. Sir, I will walk here in the hall. If it pleases His Majesty, tis the breathing time of day with me. Let the foils be brought, the gentleman willing, and the king hold his purpose. I will win for him, and I can. If not, I gain nothing but my own shame and uh, the odd hits. Shall I re-deliver you in so? To this effect, sir, after what flourish your nature will. I commend my duty to your lordship. Yours, yours. <laughs> it is very sultry. <laughs> You will lose this way to my lord. <laughs> I think not. Since he went into France, I have been at continual practice. Oh. I will win at the odds. Oh. But I would not think how ill all is about my heart. But it is no matter. My good lord, if there is anything in your mind that you dislike, obey it. Not a whit. We defy augury. If it be now, it is not to come. If it be not to come, it will be now. If it be not now, yet it will come. The readiness is all. Come, Hamlet, come. Take this hand from me. Give me your pardon, sir. I've done you wrong. But pardon it, as you are a gentleman. I do receive your offer with love, like love and will not wrong it. I embrace it freely. And will this brother's wager frankly play? Give us the foils, come. Now come, one Good. for me. <laughs> Young Osric, give them the foils. Cousin Hamlet, you know the wager? I do, my lord. Your grace hath laid the odds on the weaker side. Huh. I do not fear it, for I have seen you both. But since he's bettered, we have therefore odds. If Hamlet give the first or second hit, or quit in answer to the third exchange. Let all the battlements their ordinances fire. The king shall drink to Hamlet's better breath, and in the cup an union shall he throw, richer than that which four successive kings in Denmark's crown have worn. <laughs> the king now dunks to Hamlet. Come, begin, and you, the judges, bear a wary eye. <laughs> Come, sir. Come, my lord. No, no, man. A hit, a very palpable hit. Uh, well, again, again. <laughs> Stay, give me drink. Hamlet, this pearl is thine to your health. Take him the cup. I'll play this bout first. Let it buy a while. <laughs> What? A hit. What say you? A touch, a touch, I do confess. <laughs> Our son shall win. He is fat and scant of breath. Here, Hamlet, take my napkin, rub thy brows. The queen caruses to thy fortune, Hamlet. Good madam. Gertrude, do not drink. I pray you, uh, pardon me, I will, my lord. 
Oh, there's the poison cup. It's too late. I did not drink yet, madam, by and by. Let me wipe thy face. My lord, I'll hit him now. I do not think it. <sighs> and yet tis almost against my conscience. Come for the third, Laertes. You but dally. I pray you, pass with your best violence. I'm afraid you make a wanton of me. Oh, say you so. <laughs> Come on! Right the oh, oh, nothing out of the way! No! Heavens, no! They are insane! Heaven, no! No! Don't! Go! Look to the side! Oh! No! 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 She swans to see them bleed! Oh, my Oh, villainy! Oh, let the door be locked! Treachery, seek it out! Yes, here, Hamlet! Hamlet, thou art slain! No medicine in the world can do thee good. And though there's not half an hour of life, the treacherous instrument is in thy hand. Unbated and envenomed, the foul practice hath lain me here low. Here I lie, never to rise again! Thy mother is poisoned. I can no more. The king, the king's to blame! The point. No! And venom too. Then venom do thy uh, work. Uh, 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 here thou murderous uh, incessant, uh, down the uh, dead. Uh, Drink off this potion. Is thy union here? Follow my mother, serpent. Uh, he's justly served. It is a poison tempered by himself. Exchange forgiveness with me, noble Hamlet. Mine and my father's deaths come not on thee, nor thine on me. Heaven make thee free of it. I follow thee. Wretched queen. Adieu. Horatio. Mm -hmm. I am dead. But thou livest. Report me, and my cause are right. To the unsatisfied. Oh, Horatio. If ever thou didn't hold me in thy heart, to all thy breath and pain to tell my story. Oh, what warlike noise is this? Young fortune brought with conquest comes from Poland. To the ambassadors of England gives this warlike folly. Oh. I die, Horatio. The potent poison quite accrues my spirit. The rest is silence. Now cracks a noble heart. Good night, sweet prince. And let angels sing thee to thy rest. Why does the drum come hither? Where is this sight? Cease your search. If aught of woe and wonder. This quarry cries on havoc. Give order. That these bodies be placed high on the stage to the view, so that I may yet speak to a, an unknowing world about how these events came about. Let three captains bear Hamlet like a soldier to the stage. Take up the bodies. Such a sight as this becomes the field, but here shows much amiss. Go, bid the soldiers to shoot. 